I'm very glad to be the first speaker today. My name is Luisa Lucchesi. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Pittsburgh, and today I'm going to present to you how the spatial sampling procedures affect the quality of data-driven models. And the case I'm presenting today is about landslide susceptibility mapping. How the best? the slide, sorry. So it's about landslide susceptibility mapping. Landslide susceptibility mapping is a classification problem because you need to classify the areas into susceptible or non-susceptible to landslides. To do this, you need two types of samples in order to do data-driven models. In this case, we use the landslide scars as our, our occurrence samples or as our landslide samples, but we also need to define non-occurrence samples. So we, do, we did three types of non-occurrence samples, uh, three options. So the first one is to pick these non-occurrence samples close to where the occurrence samples uh, naturally occur or, or, or the landslides previously happened. And this is an area that is hard to classify. It's harder for a model to classify into susceptible or non-susceptible. The second option is to pick these non-occurrence samples in an area that is farther from the occurrence samples, generating samples that are spatially far, far from, the, from each other and easier to classify. And the third option is a mix of both. So we did train our artificial neural networks and the resulting landslide susceptibility maps are as follows. So for the hard to classify samples, we get an okay map. For the easy to classify map uh, samples, we get this map that is not constricted. The susceptibility, the high susceptibility is all over and it's not usable for zonation. And in the third case, when we have a mix of both, we do get a map that is very similar to the first one. But then when we calculate uh, the accuracy for each of those, we get the lower accuracy of 89% for the harder to classify samples. Because the model, it needs to train more in order to in order to make this model because the samples are harder to classify, but they also being evaluated more harshly. What happens, thank you, what happens in the second case is that you have easier to classify samples because they are spatially far from each other. And in this case, you get 100% accuracy, but the model doesn't have to train really hard to get to this 100% accuracy. That's why the map isn't as great. And in the, cur in the third case, what you get is that the model trains really hard, but when you evaluate this model, you're putting this easy to classify samples within the mix of samples, and then you artificially uh, upper your, uh, your accuracy. So the important message is that metrics can be tweaked in spatial context. Do not chase better metrics, chase better models. Thank you.